Hello, everyone. My name is Ron Watkins, and I'm a shark ambassador with Sharks for Kids. Happy Earth Day to everyone from all of my shark friends out there and sharky peeps. Thank you for joining. Today, we have our guest back who is going to teach us how to draw a new species of shark. A lot of you have tried to guess what kind of shark it is, and we've had some really good guesses, but no one's quite gotten it right today. So Dr. Julius, who is taught two other sessions on how to draw sharks, and I actually participated in those sessions, and one of them was a tiger shark. There's my tiger shark. What do you think, Dr. Julius? And here's, here's a hammerhead. Very, very cool. So... Today, we're going to learn how to draw a new shark. Now, um, you know, Jul Julius is pretty famous. If any of you have ever gotten any mail and you've had one of those really, really cool um, stamps on it with the dinosaur, why don't you show everyone those cool dinosaur stamps that you had done? Ron, thank you. Yeah, this is, um, these are the, the T-Rex stamps that the United States Postal Service uh, had me illustrate and the neat thing about these guys is that if you rotate them they're, le they're lenticular so some of them actually change the appearance when you rotate them the skeleton becomes fleshed out and the other one runs at you sort of thing so yeah oh that's those are really cool i wanted to show everyone those because what we're going to be drawing today is older than dinosaurs it's been around longer than dinosaurs so that's pretty cool and there's, he's also done stamps of sharks. So uh, he's, oh, there's one there, a great white. Oh, that's a beautiful stamp. Mm -hmm. But a bunch oh, of others. Oh, very, very nice. Yeah. So we're in, we're in good hands today, and we're going to learn how to draw a new shark. Um, during today's session, please use the Q&A at the bottom of your screen. So down here, you'll see the Q&A tab. If you want to ask any questions, and I'll answer some of them throughout today's uh, presentation, and then we'll open up questions at the end uh, for Dr. Julius. So with that, I'm going to turn things over to you, and uh, I'm going to get my paper and pencil. I'm going to try to hold a pencil with my fins <laughs> and draw nice. the best I can. So it's all you. That's, that's excellent. Uh, very nice shark suit. Um, I hope you're comfortable in there. And, you know, it was, uh, it was, uh, it was a nice and, and, and friendly uh, munching that happened there. Uh, well, thank you very much, Ron, and it's always a pleasure to come on the show uh, for Sharks for Kids and do a, a drawing session, and so happy Earth Day, everybody, and this is the 50th Earth Day, actually, since the very first one in 1970, so this is uh, kind of a momentous one, I guess, that way, and uh, so, you know, I hope everybody's having a fun time on Earth Day and, and, and is finding uh, neat things to do to recognize the fact that we have to do our best to take care of uh, the planet's biosphere in which we live, uh, because it takes care of us as well, and, uh, and you know, because we love it. So what we're going to do today is uh, draw a shark, and I know you guys have been wondering what species of shark we're going to be drawing, uh, and uh, so I, I picked one this time that is, um, has a very wide distribution on Earth. Uh, it inhabits both uh, of the giant oceans, the Atlantic and Pacific, and it has a range all the way from the far north uh, in the northern hemisphere to the far south of the southern hemisphere and right through the tropical regions. But normally it uh, inhabits cooler waters. So the species we're going to illustrate, actually, so it's one of these uh, sharks uh, that I illustrated for uh, the Canada Post Shark Series. And if you look uh, closely, you'll see it right here, the basking shark. So it's the second largest uh, shark. It's alive today. It's the second largest fish alive today. Um, and it is one of the unusual sharks that is unlike most species in that it eats plankton. It's odd because it's the second biggest species, but it eats tiny little copepods, which are tiny little uh, invertebrates or uh, organisms that have no backbone. Um, so I'm going to share my screen with you. And uh, I'm going to be using, uh, I'm going to be doing this uh, uh, digitally. So 
Uh, I have a stylus and a uh, tablet. I, just, I draw this digitally. And then you can share, you can follow along either if you have a tablet or um, it works just as fine with a paper and pencil. What I'd like to do is if you have a couple of colors available, then that's great. If not, if you have a pencil and pen, then those two would be good. Or if you just have a pencil, uh, then just draw, you know, lightly for the first bit. Uh, and then I'll tell you when we're going to shift over to produce sort of the, the, the heavier details in the end to fill everything in. And then you can draw heavier lines or with a darker color or with, you know, ink versus pencil, whatever makes it more visible. The idea is that we're going to start with creating some sort of guide shapes that help us to establish where the different shapes of the shark will be. And then we're going to add the details in uh, with uh, heavier lines. So the way I'm going to show how I'm doing it is I will work on the first bit, the guide shapes in red. And uh, so you can see here, you should be able to see my screen now. Um, I'm going to draw lines like this. And you're going to see that in red first. And then I'm going to shift over to black afterwards when we add the details. Okay. So uh, as I was saying, we're going to be drawing a basking shark. And uh, basking sharks are such amazing creatures. I haven't seen them myself. I'd love to one day. Uh, they're called that because they tend to hang out a lot in cooler waters near the surface or right at the surface. Sometimes you know, like they're basking in the sun. Um, you can see them sometimes break the surface with uh, their uh, uh, dorsal fin, the upper the fin on their back, the main one, and sometimes their tail tip also comes out of the water. So you can see like two fins coming out of the water. Uh, so we're going to see a couple of those uh, in the drawing today. One of the things that I'd like to do this time, because the last times uh, on Sharks for Kids when I did this sort of drawing bit, we did sharks that were from the side or from the top. Now we're going to do a little bit different. It's a little bit more complicated, but it'll be easy to do anyway. It'll be uh, a shark not from the side or from above, but kind of swimming toward us. And the reason I want to do this is because the sh basking shark has this absolutely amazing mouth uh, that it uses to basically, it's called ram feeding. It opens its mouth really wide and then filters millions of liters of water uh, per hour through its uh, uh, gills, uh, and it has special little filaments that come off the, what are called, gill, these are gill rakers, and they, they basically like comb teeth to catch the uh, food out of the water, and filter it out so we can swallow that. And so we're going to show the shark from the front so we can see some of uh, how it, it, it manages to get so much water uh, and prey in its mouth, uh, even though the prey is tiny, it can get enough to eat this way. Okay, so I'm going to start. So you want to take your paper. I've set this up so that it's an eight and a half by 11 inch paper, but whatever size works. Uh, the main thing is uh, keep in mind how big the shapes are that we're drawing uh, on the paper so that you, we can fit the entire shark on there. I'll, I'll show you as we go. So the first thing that we're going to do now is draw in the, right in the middle of your paper. Uh, take uh, If you have the red or, or uh, colored or light colored uh, pen or whatever, draw a circle about, you know, about right in the middle and about a third of the size of the paper. I kind of have a little bit of a guide shape set up there, so you can kind of see it. Do that. So right in the middle, about one third of the height of your paper or so. That's going to be uh, our, our first stage, and it doesn't look much like a basking shark yet. You're going to have to really use your imagination to figure this one out first. But it should become obvious pretty soon. Uh, so the second thing we're going to do is now uh, we're going to start to add uh, some additional things. Now, the next one, this next shape is kind of like a half circle-ish sort of thing. You're going to go a little off the side of your big circle, and you're going to draw kind of a half circle, almost like a backward capital D. This. Okay. And pretty soon it's going to be obvious uh, what's happening here. And uh, keep in mind, the, the main thing here is that this shark has an absolutely extraordinary mouth, gigantic. But it's got tiny little teeth. So if you look at your, your pinky, your, your little finger, 
look at the fingernail on that. Those teeth of the spasking shark are like half the size of your fingernail each. They're tiny. And, and the mouth is, if you stretch out your arms, um, you know, the mouth is like three feet or a meter wide, basically, it can be. And uh, so those tiny little teeth that basically aren't functional for, for eating, it, it's not using them for that, but it's still got teeth. Um, anyway, so we're going to add another shape now. And this shape is kind of um, kind of a little bit of a hook. So if you go off to the side of that big circle you drew, starting at the very bottom, you're going to just kind of come down like this, a sort of a rounded kind of a hook shape, something like that. I'm actually going to um, make this. I'm going to just go back and make it a little bit smaller. But that's okay. That was a good shape and a good size before. That's okay, too, if you did. Don't worry about erasing it. I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller for myself. Okay. Now we've got three shapes happening. The next shape is a, a kind of another sort of a hook shape. Go to the very top of the big circle you made and start at the top and go upward and a little bit off to the side like this. And at the very top is a kind of a bit of a hook like that. And then it comes back down and hits that sort of backward D or half circle. So the reason for this, and this is one of the places where I think basking charts are just so neat and so weird. What you can start to see here is that backward D or that half circle we made, that's going to be the mouth of the shark. The mouth of the shark is really wide, like I'm saying, when it's fully open. When it's closed, uh, they actually kind of look pretty comical, uh, like a Muppet character. It's really long. Uh, and if I were to actually just, don't worry about drawing this yourself, but if I were to draw on the side here, the, the shark's head from the side, it kind of looks, looks like this. Um, and then its eye would be like that, the nostril. And then when its mouth is open, it tends to do this kind of a thing from the side. Um, when the mouth is closed, uh, as I was saying, they can look kind of comical, and it, 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 it goes long like this, and then it looks something like that. Its eye is pretty far forward. And so, yeah, they've got these enormously long mouths. Uh, so what we're seeing on, on the shark that we're drawing, though, is its mouth is open. And that top hook sort of shape is a snout. The neat thing about this shark, as I was saying, is that the, the adults have a more or less, you know, sort of normal sharky looking uh, snout. But the youngsters have the strangest shaped uh, snout. Some of them can have a very, very strongly hooked snout at the tip. And uh, at the end, you can choose whether to make it an adult shark or a juvenile or a young shark, uh, depending on how hooked you make that snout. Uh, because the, otherwise, they look pretty similar in terms of their shape. Uh, to the adults. Okay, so we're going to continue adding uh, uh, sort of guide shapes to the shark. The next one is kind of like um, another kind of a hook shape. So we're going to go near the bottom of this uh, big circle that we made in the beginning. And we're going to make sort of like a, a long, narrow hook coming off like this and connect it back there. So I mentioned that we're looking at the shark not from the side, but sort of uh, what's called obliquely or kind of partly facing us and the reason again is so that we can show off the inside of that great big mouth this shape that we just made right here is going to be one of the pectoral fins and a pectoral fin is like the equivalent of our arms it's those two limbs that come off the front of the body and they're paired fins for sharks uh, they have two each, and um, these are the ones that are just behind the gill slits. The one that we just did is the one on the other side of the shark, uh, its left pectoral fin. And now we're going to add the right pectoral fin. This is again just the guide shapes. Uh, start just to the left of your great big circle, part of the way through that larger uh, rounded hook, and then add, now pay, pay attention to this one, it's a longish one, shape but it's narrower than the one we did just before the reason for that is because this shark is kind of swimming partially toward us and as artists when we 
make um, images of animals that are coming toward us, we have to think about uh, perspective or how shapes change when you look at them from different angles um, as they go away from you. And how when you look at a long animal uh, or I mean, you look at a long animal straight head on, it, 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 it looks like it's more squashed, right? This is something called foreshortening. Uh, so that the long parts of the animal appear uh, short to us because we're only seeing uh, them uh, sort of at a, at a very different angle than from the side. And this thin, thin here, or this fin is thin here on this side because on, on this side of the shark, we're seeing that its right pectoral fin kind of edge on. So if I were to take my hand and I hold it up straight in front of my face here, you can see it full flat like this. But if I were to rotate it, Toward you like this, you see it sort of edge on, sort of like a like if you take a knife and you look at the blade edge on, or a sheet of paper, then you don't see much of it. It's much thinner. That's what's happening here. A basking shark has great big pectoral fins, but when you look at them from the edge, there's not a lot of what's called cross-sectional area. Cross-section it doesn't look very big. So those two fins are the pectoral fins. They use those ones to help push them um, up, basically like wings when they're in, in the water. The basking shark swims slowly, relatively speaking, and uh, it, it, it pumps water, or rather it, it just ram feeds. It allows water to go through the gills and, and, and catch all the, the invertebrates or those little tiny, tiny copepods in its, um, in its gill rakers. But it stays afloat, partly because these fins help it to kind of um, you know, they kind of tilt in a way and they keep it afloat, but also it's got this gigantic liver. And the liver contains oil, a lot of oil, uh, that is lighter than water. Uh, and so it tends to help it to stay afloat as well. Unlike bony fish, sharks don't have these air bladders. And so they help to stay afloat in some cases because they have these oily livers. There's a little bit more about sort of shark um, anatomy and, uh, and physiology. Uh, so next thing that we're going to do is we're going to remember that this shark also has a dorsal fin. Again, like last time I was saying, the dorsal fins are the ones that are on the back of the animal. We're seeing this guy sort of from the front. So this dorsal fin, if you go to the, the top end of that uh, sort of that long hook shape that you did uh, coming off the left side of the big circle, you're going to make another hook shape like this. And again, this is the dorsal fin, but you're seeing it partially edge on. Shark is swimming toward us. So again, we don't see the full size of that dorsal fin. That's the first dorsal fin. Uh, basking sharks have two dorsal fins, like most sharks. Uh, this is the big one, the one on the front. And most sharks also have a small one in the back. We actually won't see that second one from this angle of the shark because we want to focus on it. But this shark does have another pair of fins under its body. These are the pelvic fins. And these are the, the same kind of thing that we have that the equivalent evolutionarily to our legs. Uh, they're a pair of fins that exist further back on the shark. And you're going to go to the sort of the lower end of that big sort of long round hook shape. And you're going to put one sort of hook over here. And then you can continue this over to the left side, and this one's narrower, that. Kind of like two, oh, I don't know, um, yeah, little angles, or um, we used a lot of uh, banana shapes for the last sharks that, um, that I, I took us through in drawing, um, because sharks are composed of a lot of different shapes, but bananas tend to be one of the shapes that, that we often find repeating when we're drawing sharks, and they tend to have a lot of those kinds of shapes, and different angles. And so you could think of them as like in little ends of bananas or, or longer narrow bananas. So sharks seem to be made of bananas in circles a lot if you look at the drawings that I do. Um, okay, so those are the pelvic fins. You can see both of them because again, we're seeing the shark from the front a little bit from below. So those fins are two smaller fins at the sort of nearer toward the back of the shark. And they're the equivalent of our legs. They have um, a help to keep the shark afloat as well. They're kind of like the, the fins on, uh, on, on uh, submarines, for example. And then there's another uh, fin that we'll see on the shark. This is called the anal fin. It's a little fin. 
that is in the center of its body on the underside of the shark. It's the only fin like that except for the tail fin. And this will come right between those pelvic fins, comes outward, and it's just going to be a narrow little thing like that because we're seeing this one edge on. The actual fin shape is, uh, if, you, if I draw it to the side here, it's, um, it's actually more like this. If the front end of the shark fits swimming that way, this is what the anal fin looks like. It points downward. But we're only seeing it edge on. So that's the, the second last fin. And then there's one other fin that this shark uh, has visible to us, and that's the tail fin or the caudal fin. And we are seeing this shark uh, swimming toward us and kind of a little bit turning. And he, this guy's turning toward its left slowly as it's um, ram feeding. And so we see that the body is a little bit twisted. And so this tail fin comes out and you'll go to the, big, to the bottom where that anal fin and pelvic fins met and you'll start drawing from there downward into a long sort of narrow um, edge again like this. Just a narrow shape like that. Uh, you're seeing just the lower lobe of this tail fin because of the way the shark is swimming. If you were, again, to go to, I'm just going to just draw this on the side here. Don't worry about this. Uh, if I were to look at this tail fin from the side of a basking shark, it looks like this. Again, if the shark is swimming to our right, that's the upper lobe of the tail fin, and it comes down like this, and then the lower lobe looks like this. So that's what the tail actually of the shark would look like, and there's the, sort of the thicker fleshy part continues through here with the spine. Um, what we're seeing now is this part. That lower lobe is, is that long thing hanging down mostly because we're only seeing it from the edge. Uh, this, this shape is called a lunate tail, basically. And its upper lobe is longer than the lower lobe. And this is a condition in sharks um, that's described as heterocircle. Um, it's two differently, different lengths of, of lobes of the tail thing. So now we've got all the fins visible that we can see from our angle on the shark. And you can sort of see what's happening with the shark's um, shape overall, the way that it's turning uh, slightly as it approaches us. The other thing that we want to do now is that sort of half backward D or that half circle, we want to connect that to the rest of the body because that was, that's the mouth. So if you go to the bottom of that half circle or the big backward D, uh, just draw a line that comes like this to connect it to the big circle. That's sort of the chin of the shark underneath its mouth. If I were to open my mouth really wide, it's this part down here that we're seeing, kind of the throat area. Also, uh, you can draw a little bit of a line um, from the top of this big hook shape, kind of down a little bit like this, ah, more like a dotted line even, a very, very light one. Because this, the snout of the shark, if you look at the picture of that, that head I drew down here, it's kind of like um, there's a little bit of a, a change in shape that happens here behind the eye. Uh, the, the way this snout is shaped and the head is shaped, it, it, it kind of bulges out a little bit there. And then the, there's a great big bulge behind its head. Because this shark is swimming uh, with its mouth open, that that area where the gills are it gets really expanded because that's where the water is being forced out of its mouth. And now we need an eye for our shark. And on this image, the eye of the shark is going to be right here. You see there's going to be a little circle that we'll put, a little, they're pretty small eyes. And uh, it, it, they're funny because the eyes are pretty far forward on the face, especially with compared to the, where the mouth is. And so like that little picture I drew of the shark at the bottom there, you can see that the eye is pretty close to the beginning where the, where the mouth starts, just slightly behind that. And in our angle of the shark, we see it like this over here. Also, it has a couple of nostrils, right? And so these sharks, um, the nostril would be about here. Okay. And then you might see, and they also have kind of a, kind of like a little flap. Of, of, of tissue, um, whoops, I kind of made a big blotch there with my pen. And it's sort of visible on the other nostril, hanging off the other nostril off the other side of the shark like that. It's a tiny little notch there. 
So we're almost finished with the guide shapes. Now, if you go back to the left side of the big circle you drew, that represents the, the left side of the circle you drew. The very first shape represents where the first the gill slit is of the shark. This is massively expanded. Basking sharks have the longest gills relative to their body of any of the sharks. Um, again, because the water exits through there and they need a lot of surface over which to filter out the food from, their, from the water that they take in. And so this edge here is the, basically where the first gill slit would be on, on our side of the shark. Behind it, you have four other gill slits on each side of the shark because sharks, most species, have five gill slits of the living ones. We're going to add a few of those, and you're just going to add a little arcs coming down not as long as the first one, though. That one, that's the second gill slit, is a little bit shorter. And then go to the top again and add another little arc even shorter than that, ending here. And then a third, that was the third one. Now a fourth one, starting at the top and then ending even shorter. And then the last one, the fifth one, again, starting at the top and ending even shorter, just above where that pectoral fin starts. So that little image that I drew of the shark at the bottom, if we were to, I'm just going to draw another short little thing here that you don't have to draw, but if I were to draw a picture of that shark from the side, and make it a little bit smaller than that image, there's the mouth, the eye, if we go back toward the, the main part of the body here, those gill slits are like this. They're huge. There's the first one, second one, third, fourth. Actually, they're even slightly longer than that. Sorry. They basically just about, they almost fully encircle the head of the shark. They're gigantic. They curve right around. There's the fourth one, and then the fifth one is here. But they get a little bit shorter the further back you go. And then when it's uh, feeding, those things expand right out. And that's why they're so round uh, from the angle we're looking at it. Okay, so those are the gill slits of the shark. Um, and then one other thing that we, one of the neat things about the angle we've chosen to show this shark is that with the mouth open like this, you can also see inside and the, the route that the water takes when it's being filtered out through the shark's um, special little uh, uh, filaments on the, on the gill. It's called the gill rakers. And on the inside of the mouth of the shark, there's going to be these five um, gaps or, or holes, long uh, slits through which the water exits toward, over the gills. Because the gills do two things here, right? One, they take oxygen out of the water because there's a lot of blood-rich gill filaments that go through those slits. And two, in basking sharks, they help to filter the food out of the water. So we're going to see five slits on the inside of the mouth of the shark in the pharynx. And interestingly, these gill uh, slits on the insides apparently start further forward in the mouth of the shark than they do when you look at it from the outside. Because there's quite a long path that the water takes through these slits inside of the slits for the water to pass over the gill filaments to take out oxygen and on the inside of that to filter it out. So I'm going to draw five sort of, oh, these are, again, kind of banana shapes right here. Narrowish bananas, one like that. And then going backward, notice, notice where the, the front edge of this, this mouth, it, it's much, this, this first banana shape is much closer to the, the edge of the mouth there, the front end, then the first gill slit on the outside is visible. That's important to remember. Um, the second one comes behind that. It's also a banana, but a little bit smaller. Uh, and then the third one. And they're getting smaller. A fourth one. And one more behind it, a fifth one. When you look at a shark, a, a basking shark, um, from the front, right from the front, there are these, you can see these really well. Uh, there are these five uh, slits on the inside that line up and on both sides and it just it just looks really funny they look so goofy when they're swimming towards you and they're harmless they they you know they couldn't really there's nothing that would happen you, you know you could get stuck inside the mouth you don't want to do that you don't want to be swimming too close toward them if they are swimming toward you you know you want to get out of the way but they're not going to hurt you that way it's there's the teeth are so tiny there 
they're 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 not very useful for feeding. It's just that um, these are big mouths. They're amazing. So here we have these these gaps, these slits on the inside of the mouth. If you were to look uh, while it was feeding, you would actually see there's kind of like a almost a hairy kind of a material uh, on the inside and the outside. And you could see right through to sort of a gap when it's open because you can see <laughs> right out uh, at the way the water goes. And you can see some of the, the gill filaments to take oxygen out of the water. And you can see the gill rakers as well. It's really neat. Okay, now we've got to the part, part where we're going to add the details to the shark. There's really not much details to add here because our guide shapes carry us along really well. But we're going to change now to, if you have a different color, if you have a darker color of pen or pencil, um, shift to that now. Uh, or if you are going, if you're using just one pencil, then you can make heavier lines from here on. And, or if you want to, you can even just slightly erase out some of the lines that you've made. Make, Keep them visible because you want this to be guide shapes. But if you want, you can just kind of slightly make them lighter. Um, or if, if not, that's fine too. But I'm going to now shift to black um, so that you can see this is what it looked like, right? That's the color we're going to use now to make these next uh, final shapes more visible from the guide shapes. So we're really going to just follow this shark pretty much like we did it. There's one difference here that I want to point out. And remember I mentioned that Young basking sharks have these wonky snouts. They're just the funniest looking things. Some basking sharks, when they're young, you can see that this snout on an adult may look like this, but, and it's even got a little bit of a hook, but in a young shark, if I were to draw a young shark, if I were to go to the tip of the snout, it could actually look like this. Watch what happens when I add the tip of the snout here. It can actually do this. they can have these really strange hook shapes or even maybe a little bit taller. Um, I've seen photos of, 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 of juvenile sharks and they have this, it looks like that. It, it, it looks so bizarre. Uh, or sometimes like long and, and turned downward. Their sh snout shape looks really strange as it grows. So you can do that if you want. Uh, I'm gonna start with making the adult shark. So I'm just gonna follow this shape uh, that we made initially, the guide shape with the black pen now. You can see how it just kind of follows like that. The, the snout is still a little bit hooked, more than most sharks. Not always that much, and the older ones less so. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now there's that tiny little bit of a flap on the nostril on the opposite side. We come down here where the snout reaches the mouth, and we're gonna join that kind of smoothly. Now, the mouth of the shark, like if you look at your own mouth and you've got the corners of your mouth, that is visible on a shark a little bit too. About halfway down this open mouth, you can make this little bit of a notch on the inside like that. That's kind of how it would be. So this shape, if we were to follow along the mouth, kind of has a little bit of a bulge there. And then it does connect here where that notch is. There's actually a difference in color when you look at the shark. The outside skin of the shark is dark brown, to black, grayish, or even a little bit bluish. The inside of the mouth is white, uh, and there's a very stark difference in color. And sometimes there, there are also these speckles of outside color, like brown or black on the inside. So they look really neat. You could probably recognize individuals that way. Um, so there, that's the corner of the mouth you're seeing. Uh, and then at the bottom, it continues out like this, ball just slightly. And then the very bottom of the mouth, near the chin, like that. And then we'll follow along the mouth on, on, on the close side. And then again, at the corner of the mouth, there will be a teeny bit of a, come, comes out a little bit of a notch. And then we'll follow again the mouth up toward the top and the front of the mouth, like that. Connect it. Yes. That's the wide open mouth of the shark. And it really is huge when it's feeding like there's again our nostril on our side, and there's actually a little bit of a groove that goes forward like that. And there's the eye, we'll give it an eye. Now the basking sharks have pretty dark eyes. Uh, we're not gonna add, oops, this is a bigger blush than I wanted to make. Uh, we're not gonna give it much detail here because it's pretty small. Um, you would see the pupil really quite big, and it, really it would look quite dark. Not a lot of detail you can see. Now we're going to connect the top of the back of the neck of the shark basically with its snout, starting with the back of the snout where we ended. 
going backward along the top and just really just follow the line that we made. Goes up a little toward the top of the gill slits and all the way back to the dorsal fin, the first dorsal fin we did. In fact, I'm going to continue even further back and follow the line right down to the top of the pectoral fin. I'll stop there. We don't want to go through it because that pectoral fin, that those paired fins that are like our arms, those are in front of the body edge of the shark that's visible. Um, so we're going to draw that pectoral fin now, starting from just below the gill slits and come out like this, follow the line that we did before. And it's again, it's kind of narrow because we're seeing it edge on. I'll come back. Now at the base here, um, we're going to give it a bit of a, there's a sort of a flap of tissue uh, it, or a, the, the fin ends with a bit of a, a kind of a, a, tr a loose trailing edge. Uh, and so you can see that a little bit because it connects only in the front part. If I were to draw the side from the side, that fin, again, I'm just going to draw to the side. You don't have to worry about this, but near that bottom picture I did, this is what the pectoral fin of the shark looks like from the side. The shark is, draw is uh, swimming to the right. Uh, and it connects to the body here with this dotted line. This is the fin. This part here, this is that that trailing edge that's separate from the body. And that's what we're seeing over here in our drawing. Uh, and now uh, we'll just finish up that dorsal fin, the fin on the back of the shark. It's really exactly the same as we drew with the guide shape. Like that. Now we need to do the bottom from the chin of the shark backward along its body. So at the, the bottom of that mouth there, I give it a wee tiny bit of a chin separate from the, the mouth, just to show that there is really not much of a chin there. Continues back along that line that we drew down to this kind of a little bit of a bulge where the, the gill slits and this pharynx area, kind of like our throat area, expands out as it's uh, feeding. And we'll continue along the bottom of the body of this shark. Um, one thing, actually, when these things are feeding, the front gill slit, as I mentioned, is really, really wide. And sometimes the body of the shark can look like it's, it, it's discontinuous with, uh, like almost like it's it continued separately from the gill slit. So sometimes you'll see this bit of a notch. So when I take this line continued here, you can see it kind of continues into the, it looks like it continues on to the, uh, the other gill on our side of the shark. And then the body can kind of, as I mentioned, there's, it's not like the same line almost. It continues a little bit further in like this. And it goes back toward those pelvic fins. And I'm going to stop at the front of the pelvic fin there. Um, I'll give it that pectoral fin. It's the left pectoral fin, like the arm. It's, it's the same shape as we did with the guide shape. Just follow that like this. That we're seeing a little bit from underneath, right? Because that shark is sort of swimming a little bit over us. And uh, so you're seeing some of the bottom side of that fin. We're not seeing that, that trailing edge that's loose because it's a little bit behind that giant expanded gill region of the shark. I'm going to finish up the, pe the pelvic fins, those two small fins near the back of the shark. Again, the same way that we had drawn them. One, it's, it's left one, and you have to think in reverse here because it's facing us. That, and then where it meets the body, it, there's a little bit of a trailing edge like that. So you kind of give it a little bit of a hook like that. The, the shark's right pelvic fin, or the left one from our perspective, is narrower again than the right one because, again, we're seeing it almost edge on, and there's a little bit of a notch here. We are seeing the belly of the shark a little bit, and we're seeing underneath it. So where these fins come together, it's interesting. The front of these pelvic fins start out a bit wider, and then where they join at the back, they're closer. And so you have less space between the back ends of that fin than the front ends if we're looking at it from this angle. That's why it's wider space between the front ends. And then we need to connect the body, uh, at the edge of the body, from under that uh, pectoral fin, the front big paired fin to this pelvic fin. So we're just continuing that line from the bottom of that pectoral fin and right up to the tip of the front end of that shark's right pelvic fin, the left one on our side. 
Uh, now we're going to add that anal fin. Again, it's just really edge on, so you can only see it as a kind of a, a narrow blade like that. And the bottom of the tail fin, or that lower lobe of what's called the caudal fin or tail fin, like this. And again, we're seeing it edge on because the shark is swimming mostly toward us. And also, you can see it's kind of a little bit curved because the shark is curving as it swims, but it's using its tail to paddle, to push it forward. And so we're seeing the tail start to curve in the opposite direction now in, as it beats its tail back and forth slowly to push itself along in the water. The last couple of things we need to do is add the gill slits of the shark. Remember, the first gill slit is the big one in basking sharks, the really long one. And so we'll start right at the top of that circle that we drew, basically, and continue this half circle all the way down from the top to connect where we left off at the bottom here. And then remember that there were four other gill slits on each side. And so those start pretty much right just about at the very top of the shark near its back. And again, like where we drew those guidelines, those arcs, you come down a good ways. Now at the bottom of these, of these gill slits, there's a wee bit of a hook like that. Not, you can't see too well from this angle, but it's still visible a bit. It's just the way that they connect up with the body like that. Um, there, there tends to be a bit of a hook. The second, or I'm sorry, the third gill slit now, uh, I have to keep track of the number of these, comes from the top again, just beyond that one. There's not a lot of space between them on this drawing because from this angle, and there's that hook again, it stops a little bit sooner, from this angle, that first gill slit uh, is kind of hiding some of the ones behind it a little bit or isn't allowing us to see that much space between them because of this angle. It's almost straight toward us. Here comes the fourth gill slit coming down just behind that third one and ending a little closer up and another wee bit of a hook. And then the last one, the fifth one, starts near the top again and comes down and ends even a little bit further up with a little bit of a hook. That's the gill slits on our side of the shark, the shark's right side. On, and then um, actually right up behind the eye there, you remember that we made that little bit of a dotted line. That's kind of like the, the back end of the skull, the head of the shark, um, just before where it expands out with the gill slits. You'll add that little bit of a dotted line above the eye and a little bit like that. Here's where you draw it before that guide shape. Same thing. The last thing we need to do with the shark is add those uh, gill slits visible from the inside of the mouth. And those ones we're going to uh, basically just follow those banana shapes that we drew. Uh, except that when we add on, on the back end of, uh, toward the shark's back direction, toward, toward its tail, um, those bananas actually have a bit of a notch pointing forward at the middle part, just a wee bit, tiny bit. Like that. Each one of these will be like that. There's, there's a very small gap between each of these banana shapes, these slits, and they get a little bit smaller as we go backward. And again, there's a little bit of a notch in the middle, like that, on the tail uh, side, the banana shape. And another one, a third one, wee bit of a notch here. And a fourth one, even smaller. And then the last fifth slit is here. Um, and if you were to look at this shark from straight, straight forward, um, from its nose uh, pointing toward it, it would look like this. So I'm going to just draw a separate shape here. Here's the snout, here's the tip of the snout, uh, the two nostrils. The eyes are kind of visible here. And then its mouth does this kind of a thing. This is what the mouth would look like. And then the head, the, that dotted line we drew, comes down a little bit like that. And then the, the big sort of massive gill slit area from the front looks like this. There's the chin, tiny chin. Uh, and then it comes around like this. This is what you would see from the front. Those, those slits that we drew inside, those banana shapes, they would look like this. One here. Two. Three. Oops, it didn't give much space there. Four five and then on the other side kind of made them a little bit too far to one side let's just say the shark is is, is almost pointing towards us. three four five there would be these dark they're the dark um, colored as well and then back here is where its throat would be it's not always open but when it swallows that's where the food goes it, it comes out out from those those gill rakers 
and then it swallows it that way. And that's what you would see, and then you would see these pectoral fins like that coming off the side, and then you would see the dorsal fin like that. Um, that's what it looked like from the front in the anal fin, pelvic fins, and then the, the caudal fin tail. <laughs> there we go. So that's what it looked like from the front. And they're goofy looking charts. So now we've drawn our shark. Uh, you could even give it a little bit of a, a visible lateral line. That's remember, uh, sharks can feel vibrations in the water. That's how they locate their prey. And even though this doesn't actively hunt fish, um, it still has that sort of bit of anatomy to feel vibrations in the water. And there's a little bit of a line visible on the side. If you go to the top of the back of the gill slits, there's a, you can make a dotted line, a wee bit of a dotted line along the body backward like this, and then it kind of vanishes along the curvature of the shark backward. So we're done drawing our shark. Now, if you look, and I'll take away the guidelines, there we are. Now, those black lines are still visible from the other images I drew, but there's our shark. That's what the basking shark looks like. And you can color this shark if you like as well. Basking sharks are really neat. They're dark colored a little bit lighter on the bottom. They're mostly usually brownish color. And then they have these interesting sort of long um, stripe, spl splotchy stripes along their sides. So um, if I were to add those as a, a kind of a little hatch line here, in the shading, there's this kind of a long stripe on the side here and there's like another one above it. The faint lines, but there's a visible from the side if you look at the shark that it's swimming uh, in the water. That's, that's your, your basking shark, basically. Uh, and I'm just going to show you here. Um, I'm going to stop sharing that screen. Uh, and I will show you a picture of how this, this mouth works uh, by loading a picture. This is a picture that I did, a coloring sheet I did for Sharks for Kids. And this should be available on the website. Um, this is some of the sharks of, of, of Maine waters. You'll see in the back, there's that great big basking shark in the middle. Uh, if you look at the mouth open there, that's in its feeding pose. But I also made a couple of versions of this that I'll toggle through. You can see with the mouth, how the mouth looks when it, oh, sorry, when it, okay, it's not working. That's okay. <laughs> uh, I had a version that, that showed the mouth closing and opening. Um, but that's okay. That's the open version of it. Um, that, that should work that way. Those, that should also be available on the Sharks for Kids website. Okay. Yeah, you, you have a lot of sharks that you've done for us on the Sharks for Kids website. So definitely, I'll, I'll show everyone where those are at uh, after we're done with the question and answer. We've, we've got a lot of questions, um, a lot of feedback. Um, out of any of the sharks, I think I've gotten the most feedback about how much fun this one is to draw. Oh, I, think they, I think they like the mouth coming at them, you yeah. know? Those are weird. They are yeah. so neat looking. <laughs> and I've seen like the, the photos that you've taken of sharks. So beautiful. You, you have such a spectacular collection of photos that you've snapped of sharks. Uh, I am just very impressed. And some of the the, the salmon sharks we talked about last time as yeah, well. So I, I love the salmon sharks, but I've never, ever seen a basking shark. So maybe this next one. year I'll get to see one. But I was able to draw one okay. thanks to your Oh, excellent. Appreciate. Good job. So, really nice. Uh, really great. Uh, yeah. You even got the hook in the snout shark. there. <laughs> and nice. uh, for any of you out there that want to share your sharks, feel free to post them on social media or have your, your, your parents uh, or family members post them for you and just – tag uh, sharks for kids and then everyone will get to see them. Um, it'll be fun to see because everyone seemed to really enjoy this one. Um, so I, let me just start with some questions I got. Um, you know, they, they just, they love this shark. Um, but there was a question, is there a type of shark that you draw the most of? Like you get the most requests to, or you need to draw the most of? That's a good question. I, I guess the most popular shark, I think, hands down is the great white shark. And so I think that one may be the one that I get most often uh, request to draw, partly because they are just, they're very familiar uh, and people know to look for them. And they also, they also have this very, to, to many people, they have this menacing look. Um, I think they're adorable, but, um, but with the great big teeth, they're really impressive teeth. And so, for example, um, I, illustrated a book on sharks. This was the cover image. And so it was a great white shark. Uh, again, they wanted a, a picture of a shark that was very, very showy. And so we did that. And the back has like the gill slits. 
Uh, <laughs> but the Great White Shark is probably the one that I do most often. Other than that, uh, I also do some of the what are called ground sharks or uh, requiem sharks. The um, uh, those ones that are the very typical sharky sharks, like bull sharks, uh, black tip reef sharks, tiger sharks. Those ones are also very common, uh, and hammerheads as well. Oh, that's that's cool. Um, what about uh, now? Some questions about the basking shark because everyone really liked all of the facts they felt like they weren't just learning to draw it they were learning about it so that was really cool Good. and that spurred even more questions which is great um so to what degree do those mouths open they were wondering right uh basking shark mouths uh, now basking sharks as i mentioned are really big they're they're huge the the males can get up to about uh four or five meters long about 15 feet long uh, typically, females can get even bigger than that. They can get up to eight meters long, or or um, or even ten meters, which is about uh, twenty-four to thirty feet long. The biggest one ever recorded uh, was, I think, caught in a, a net in 1851, was something like forty feet long. And the mouths on these are also proportionally very large. They are about three feet wide when they're fully open, or about a meter wide. Uh, and so for our, some of our younger viewers, if they stretch out their arms fully uh, side to side, the, the mouth, mouth of the shark would be about that wide. For adults, it's about two-thirds of that wide. They're huge, huge uh, mouths. And if you wanted to do a fun activity you, with uh, uh, you know, uh, some of your uh, siblings, for example, uh, you can stretch out your arms and you take like – four lengths of you side to side, fingertips touching to each other about the length of the shark, or, oh, or, or depending wow. on, and that's the smaller ones. <laughs> so. Oh, that's pretty cool. That's cool. It, again, a lot, of, uh, a lot of things coming in still about this is the best shark drawing ever. Um, you know, I used nice. to draw them looking very cartoony, uh, Serenity says, but now this one's a lot better. Um, oh, good. So, there was also a, a question about um, the, the slits on, on the, the gill slits. Um, are those similar to uh, on a manta ray? Oh, that's a great question uh, because it, it talks about uh, how they're related to manta rays. And yes, they are similar in the sense that uh, two ways. Both uh, rays and sharks have these gill slits. On rays, they're on the bottom side of the animal, and in sharks, they're on the side. And that's one of the distinguishing features between sharks versus rays. Manta rays, as you know, also feed by um, ram feeding, uh, filtering water, filtering food out of the water, tiny little animals, right? And so they also have really long gill slits. And in that sense, they are similar to basking sharks in that the water comes out through those long gill slits on the bottom of a manta ray, and they also have these uh, called gill rakers, these specialized uh, sort of filaments on the inside of their gills uh, to catch the, the food particles or the small uh, invertebrate animals, those copepods, um, on the gills uh, rakers so that they can then swallow them. So they are very similar in that sense to manta rays functionally as well. Okay. No, that's, that's really good. Um, Another question was about pre prehistoric sharks. Um, do you draw those as well? And maybe can we draw a prehistoric shark in the future? That's a great idea. Absolutely. Um, yes, I, uh, as, as some of the viewers know, I also, most of what I do is actually, I'm, I'm a paleo artist. I'm a natural history illustrator, but I'm a paleo artist, which means that I draw uh, pictures of animals and plants and other life forms that lived long ago, long before humans. And I, I help to sort of scientists uh, to visualize what their, their st uh, study animals look like when they were alive, to reconstruct them. And so prehistoric sharks and their relatives are, are fascinatingly diverse. Uh, in the very first, oh, sorry, the second, um, the second one of these drawing sessions, I think uh, I showed uh, people a model that you can build of a helicoprion, which is a prehistoric relative of sharks, um, actually closely related to chimeras or, or rabbit fish, that lived uh, during the Permian period and that had a really strange uh, lower jaw. Oh, here it is. I just, I, here's the model again. 
uh, that, that could open and close, and it had a, a single row of teeth that acted to grab and slice prey. And this is a wonderfully interesting animal that lived, uh, and I've, I've drawn pictures of these ones as well. Uh, and there are many strange kinds that, that lived, uh, either sharks or shark relatives in the past, and I've done several of these kinds as well. And I'd love to be able to do another session at some point with prehistoric sharks and their relatives. There are some really neat ones. Really cool. cool. Yeah, Mar Marley was saying that was her favorite shark, and then also uh, the salmon shark. Those are the two oh, those favorite sharks. And then Victoria said that uh, she actually built that model. So Oh, excellent. It, I hope it yeah, turned out it's well. up online, and I'll show where that is oh, really? as well. So everyone's Good. really digging the uh, the crafts and the drawings and stuff like that. And, and the, the template for that is on the Sharks for Kids website, and you can yep. maybe show them after where the, all of those coloring sheets are right in, in, in the activities, will. I think. Uh, a few more questions. They were wondering, when did you draw your first shark? How old were you? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, well, it must have been very close to the time that I began drawing in general. Uh, I drew my very first drawing when I was three. And uh, that wasn't a shark. That one was a dinosaur. Well, yeah, technically a dinosaur. It was a rooster, so it was. it is a dinosaur. Birds are dinosaurs. Um, but I think I must have drawn my first shark very close to some time after that. I actually had, I think my mom still has maybe some of these pictures that I drew back, maybe four or five or something like that. But I remember seeing some of the pictures of sharks I drew in there. They're, yeah, they're, they have really big mouths. So maybe they were like a basking shark or a great white shark. I don't know. Oh, very, very <laughs> cool. Um, yeah, people are saying megalodon and you know sharks. Right, that's the other. I'm sure you've drawn that one too. Huh? Yes, yes, the, the megatooth shark, um, often known as megalodon, uh, after the the what's called the specific epithet, the the species name of the shark. Um, now it's known as either Otodus megalodon or or Carcharocles megalodon. It used to be classified as Carcharodon megalodon in the same genus as the great white, but it's no longer that way. People call it by that that species name a lot. Um, okay. Oddly enough, there's actually a mollusk by the name of megalodon, so it can be oh. confusing. <laughs> All right. Well, wanted to thank you once again for an awesome um, episode of Shark Talk and learning to draw sharks. I know I've my sharks have gotten better from all of your lessons and for any of you out there that have missed any of them, they're all recorded and up on our YouTube channel uh, for Sharks for Kids and you can access the YouTube channel from our website uh, that I'm going to show you next. So thanks again. I really appreciate it, Dr. Julius. Thank you, Ron. It was a pleasure. Yep. Always, always fun and uh, hopefully we'll get to do it again soon. I hope so too. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, take, take care. Um, Thank you. You too. Go oh, yeah. ahead and share my screen. Um, Sounds good. I can stop sharing mine. Okay. But I can find it. <laughs> oh, I think I think you're good. Yeah. If you, uh, okay. Um. So now I'm on our website. Let me. And when you go to sharksforkids.com, here's the menus across the top. You can learn about sharks for kids, what we're about, what we do. Um, and then under education is where the webinars are. So you can go here and get a list of all the uh, upcoming webinars and the recorded ones and links to them. And then for those of you, I see a lot of people that have been on probably five or more, maybe even 10 or more webinars. You can go download these webinar certificates and you can print these out, color them and uh, display them, maybe put them on the fridge or the wall just to show that you've participated and you're, you're jawsome and completed that many of the webinars, which is really, really cool. Um, then you can go under these links uh, for teachers, has lots of information for parents and teachers wanting to uh, teach about sharks. And then for students and all the kids, you can come here to see all the different things like the crafts, the coloring sheets, uh, you'll see different sharks um, there's a new one, the shark egg case craft, which is a lot of fun. Here's a whale shark uh, craft. And then down here are some of the drawing of the tiger shark. So you'll see we'll also put the links to the videos down here uh, once those are ready. So you see the previous ones we did, the, ti um, the tiger and the hammerhead shark. 
Um, and then here was that really cool 3D model he was just showing you. So Dr. Julius has, has been really nice to provide these uh, for us for, so that you can download for free and actually um, create those and, and keep busy. And there's tons of information on our website. So if there's any questions that I wasn't able to answer, um, definitely go ahead and go on our website, see if you can find the answers. And if not, you can always drop us an email. So let me just put up all of our contact information. Um, so you can reach out to us at our website, sharksforkids.com on Instagram, which is a little different. It's at shark education. Uh, Twitter and Facebook are both Sharks for Kids. And then our email address is just info at sharksforkids.com. So thanks again for another exciting shark talk. And I hope everyone enjoyed drawing sharks with Dr. Julius. Thank you again, Dr. Julius. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Take care.